It was pretty intimidating. Uh, I think we'd been overseas uh, maybe at least once. We've been to Vanuatu. Uh, Vanuatu is pretty, pretty quiet, pretty, pretty comfortable. Uh, don't speak that much English, but uh, it wasn't very challenging. The US was much more challenging for, for us. Uh, I think part of that is you have an expectation that the US is culturally similar. Maybe that was naive, but we went to Philadelphia, which is on the East Coast, and really the culture there is quite different to, to Australian culture in many, in many ways. Uh, it's hard to get to know people beyond sort of superficially superficial politeness. Uh, it was particularly hard for Philippa with the baby and I'd go off to the lab every day and I had great fun. It was a great lab. Uh, Philippa was essentially stuck in the, stuck in the apartment with, uh, with a little baby. And so we go, you know, do a lot of travel around, around the US uh, on weekends and uh, her parents came to visit for, for a while, which was great. Uh, but yeah, it was just very different. I think we had an, had an assumption that it would be very much like Australia and yeah, East Coast US is, is not. Philad we lived in inner city uh, Philadelphia on 47th Street. And in those days, Philadelphia was a pretty scary city. So yeah, it got incredibly rough pretty much like 48th Street onwards, outwards from the, from the, from the centre. So you just didn't go there. Uh, you know, we'd, you would get, get mugged or worse. You'd hop, we'd hop on the bus to go into town. The town, the bus had come from outskirts going into the city. We'd be the only white people on the bus. And that was never, never had that experience before in, in Australia. It was kind of confronting. Uh, they sort of sensed, we sensed hostility, but maybe we were just oversensitive. You know, there'd been big race riots in Philadelphia a few years earlier. There was you know, just parts of the city you just wouldn't go to. And that's, to an Australian, that's very odd that there are parts of a city you wouldn't go to. Were there cultural differences too in the lab? The lab was pretty mixed, a uh, bunch of people, uh, actually not too many Americans in, in the lab. Uh, so, you know, Chinese and Canadians, uh, me, Australian, uh, yeah, the people from all over uh, in, the, in the lab. And that's often the way it is with, with research labs. So it's kind of got its own, its own culture. Okay, yeah. So, so tell us a bit about the work there that you went through. So when I went there, uh, I was really interested to try and bring together these two things that I've been doing. One was this robot control that could make use of this force information that came from a sensor attached to the robot and this high speed vision stuff that I've been doing. And so I had this idea in my head that I could put these two things together so I could make a robot that could respond to visual information really quickly. So I, I took over with me one of these uh, boards that we developed, uh, you know, in, in CSIRO's collaboration with a comp the Adelaide based company. And so I took one of those with me and wrote a lot of software and got it working with the robot that they had in the lab. Same type of robot that I had in my lab at CSIRO. So that was, that was pretty handy. And, and so, you know, it, it worked. So, you know, I could move something around in front of the robot. The robot would see it and react to the changes in the image and move accordingly. And that was really the first time I think this had ever been done, that you could process the visual information as quickly as it was coming out of the camera and have the robot react, move uh, in response to that very, very quickly. So that was, that was a really interesting project. I got involved in a few side projects as I sort of always tend to do. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was a pretty seminal thing for, for me to have achieved that. And that's, this idea of using camera information to control a robot, it's a technique called visual servoing, which is an ugly word, but it's what it's called, uh, has been then sort of a thread through the rest of my, my professional life.